Hi, I'm Dave Troll with the Troll Gallery, a custom furniture shop in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I'm going to talk to you about how to router the end of a board. Um, the end of the board is generally a problem area when you're working with a router. Because of the way the cutter spins, it tends to tear out when you get to the end of the board. Most of the time, it's not something you can avoid. Um, there are a couple of things you can do to minimize it. Um, if you're just working the end of a board, what you want to do is take another board of the exact same thickness and clamp the two together. So as you come across, the piece on this corner can't tear out because it's supported by another piece on the side. If you're routing the entire face of the board, being the, the end grain as well as the long grain, the important thing to do is run your end grain first. Then if you get some tear out, as you do the long grain, the profile should take out any of the tear out that happened as you're working. Today we're going to be working with a handheld router, which is something that most people are going to be working with. And the key thing to remember when working with a handheld router is you want to work from left to right. So if we were going to do the entire board, we'd go left to right, adjust our stock where it's clamped down, do the long end, the opposite, and then come back to where we started. What I've set up here is uh, a round over bit in my router with a fairly deep cut. Uh, and I'm hoping that um, it's going to be deep enough that I will, in fact, get some tear out over here to give you an idea of what's going to happen. What I would recommend as you're doing cuts of this nature, take two or three lighter cuts, and that way you'll minimize the damage to your piece. Go ahead and put my safety gear on and set my router depth. And I'm going to go ahead and make my cut. Well, despite my best efforts to have this chew up my board, I got very little tear out at the end, but it is noticeable. So if you're only doing the end grain of your board, um, this would be fairly easy to clean up. Um, another option is to leave your board a little bit wide so that uh, as you make your cut, you can then go back to your jointer or with a hand plane and clean this up. Another thing you want to keep in mind is the speed of your bit, the fact that it's nice and sharp. I recommend a carbide bit. Um, steel bits are notorious for getting dull very quickly and will um, burn your end grain. And also the speed at which you move your router across the stock. If you move too slow or if you have a dull bit, you're going to get burning. And burning on end grain is very difficult to sand out, especially on wood such as uh, cherry and maple and things of that nature that burn fairly, fairly easily. So that's a little bit on how to router at the end of a board. I'm Dave Troll at the Troll Gallery, the fine art of furniture making.